Okay, first and foremost, this is a super cool tutorial. Why this is a super cool tutorial is because it's really easy to do. And I am scared. I'm scared because if you do it and you get caught hacking, it's game over for you. And if you seriously get caught hacking, do not tell them they know who is Mr. Hacker Loy. So you go and join a Wi-Fi network like a cafe Wi-Fi or hotel Wi-Fi, a lounge or any of these free Wi-Fi's. The moment you join in, you'll be able to see all these different folders that are shared across the network. So first you have a good friend over here, Mr. Hacker Loy. And of course, Mr. Hacker Loy would have his handy tool, whether it is a mobile device or whether it is a computer what they'll be doing now is to think about all the Wi-Fi's within the vicinity. And now you can see right here, let's say we have a free Wi-Fi that's running. And with this free Wi-Fi, it allows us to join right in. And then once we're connected with all these different devices that's already connected to the network, and also all these different devices that be connecting over into the same network, it means that we'll be able to do a discovery scan. So what we can do then is based on our hacking devices, we can go and scan across all those different devices to see what are possibly the open services on it. For example, in this case, it would be something like a shared folder, which then allow us to log right in. Or even if we don't log in, will be prompted for the username as well as the password field. And of course, as a hacker, what you do then is you'll begin injecting all these different commonly used usernames and passwords, like say admin, and of course the password as password, and see what we get and see whether there's a response to it. And the craziest thing of all is that they wouldn't even know they are being attacked. So right in front of us, we have the target computer and we're logging in right now. So I'll be logging in as Loy Liang Yang. And once we log right in, one interesting part of this is that you can also do this discovery really quickly. So say for example, you click under the Windows folder, all right? So you have the photo over here. And on the left over here is something called the network. So what you wanna do now is go ahead and click under the network tab. So now I go ahead and click on the network tab and can see all these different devices over here. So we have all these different computers, network connected printers, and many more that we can connect over into. So this is super cool. So say for example, if I go ahead and double click on a PC, boom, you can see this one over here. We have something called enter network credentials. So this means that we can start spamming into the username and password view, giving us potential access directly into the computer. And like I said, if you don't believe me, you join any of this free Wi-Fi network, even password protected Wi-Fi networks, you go right in, say in a hotel or in any of this cafe that offers free Wi-Fi. The moment you join in, you can see all these devices that you can begin targeting. And sometimes even possibly without using your password, you can log right into the computer. This is crazy. And you know what's even crazier is that if I was to go ahead and attempt logging into this computer, say like I enter hacker law, I enter whatever password, so I have no idea what's the username password, right? I click OK. And even though I may have failed the network credential or the login page, it's not even locked. There's no event for this. Nothing is going to tell the user that they're under attack. Hang on a second. We got some good news. We are able to enable it. We can look at the events that are occurring that is trying to log in to all these different services that we're opening up. So we can do it, but there are several steps that you need to go through. So that's unfortunate, of course. So now the important question is, what can you do now that we have the login page? And of course, one thing you can do is you can type as quickly as you can all those commonly user <laughs> names and passwords and see what you get. All right, just kidding. Of course, we'll be using a hacking tool like Kali Linux with all these different type of brute forcing scripts that we can automatically inject into the username as well as a password view. Okay, so right now we're on Kali Linux, your favorite article hacking operating system. Okay, just kidding. Perhaps it doesn't have to be the operating system. It's always about who is in front of the computer. <laughs> so in this case, even if it's a Windows 10 computer, you can also use it for article hacking, okay? So let's go over into terminal. And what we can do now is perhaps you have just joined into this free Wi-Fi network. You want to discover what are all the computers there. So you can use this right here. So over here, we have that discover on a target interface. We hit enter on this and it begins looking up for all those different unique hosts within the network. And within seconds, we manage to look up for all those different connected devices. So this is the same thing you can do pretty quickly with. So in this case, we'll be targeting 192.168.0.132. This is going to be the computer where we're trying to do a brute force logging into the shared folders. Now, the next thing we'll do is we'll use SMB client to go ahead and try to connect over into the target address 
All right, so enter the password for say hacker lawyers here. So I have no idea what is the username. Hit enter on that, and we can see several share names. So in this case, we have MN dollar, C dollar, IPC, as well as users. So all this are the different folders that we can possibly try to access. So pro tip over here, perhaps we could try logging in with the user guess. So maybe, perhaps this is created. This is shared out by default. So in this case, I don't even need a password. So I'm entering nothing. I hit enter. Boom. We are in. I can enter, say, for example, PWD, print working directory. Enter, say, LS. All right, we can see the following information here, like desktop.in and so on and so forth. So all this different juicy information are right here right now. And yes, boom, you're in. Now, perhaps you're thinking, you want more administrative power. You see that C dollar sign over there, and that is going to be containing even more important information that we can possibly access into. So the answer is yes, we can do so using say brute force attack method. So right in front of us, we have Hydra, which is going to be a brute forcing script. And of course, in this case, we have Loy Liang Yang as the username. However, in most cases, you'll be using usernames like root, administrator, all right, or admin sometimes, as well as possibly user and even in most common situations is that the computer itself has the same name as the username because when the user set up the computer for the first time, they're using their own name to be set as a computer name. So those are the different type of usernames that you can be using. Next up, we have dash P for the password field. So in this case, we are using a list of commonly used passwords. And then finally, by the protocol, as well as, of course, in this case, the IP address that we're targeting. And towards the end, we have dash V for the boss. Okay, okay, you must be really excited now. So in three, two, one, hit enter. And let's see what we get. So, okay, I've been running several of this before this tutorial. So I'm preparing ahead of time for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at the attack and see what we get. Boom, <laughs> done. So you can see right here, we have the IP address, the protocol, the username, as well as of course, the password. So the keyword here is password. So you can see the command right here, we have SMB client against the IP address, C dollar. All right, so of course, full by the username, hit enter on that, enter the password right now. Boom, we are in enter LS. We can see all this different information right here. We are in, it's game over. Oh wait, the tutorial is not yet over. I'll be teaching you how to detect that. That'll be even cooler. So when someone tries to attack a computer, you can get an alert for it. So if you want to know who is accessing a computer remotely, what you can do now is you can go ahead and enter the following, fs, all right, followed by mgmt, all right, dot msc. Go ahead and hit enter on this. And you can see right here, what are the sessions that is running. Now you can see over here, we have the user and the session. And of course you can see the connected time, idle time and so on. So what you can do is do a right click followed by close session, and that will help us kick out the user, all right? So this is one way of detecting who is connected to your computer remotely and being able to terminate the session. And now of course, if I go back over in Kala Linux, you can see right here, if I enter the same command, the same instruction, boom, NT status user session deleted. So here's the thing, by default, a Windows computer does not log whenever there are different types of login failures. See, for example, over here, I was go ahead and enter this. I try all different types of passwords and I keep getting the following of anti status logon failure. So almost simulating like a brute force attack. And when we go back over into Windows computer over here, you see that under the event viewer security, you will not see any form of events. So what you will need to do is to go over into the local group policy editor, go over into the computer configuration, Windows settings, security settings, and of course, over here in advanced audit policy configuration, system audit policies, select under log on, log off. And from here, you can see the following of the audit, log on, so double click on that, go ahead and click configure the following audit events, success, failure, click apply, click okay, done. And now going back to Kyle Linux, I'll try again, all different combination of passwords, ultimately to simulate as though I'm doing a form of brute force attack. All right, once I'm done with that, I go back over to Windows computer. All right, of course, this is an additional one that I'm doing over here, I will show you in a moment. We can see right here on the security, we have audit failure, and you can see these are all the different logon attempts. 
And to get the pop-up, what you can do here is you can create a task. And in this case, you can see that we have created a detect brute force attacks task. And of course, in the triggers, you have an on an event. So double clicked on this one, you can see right here, we have a did trigger on an event. All right, so in this case, we have Microsoft Windows Security Auditing 4625 event, which is the event that we saw earlier. And once you're done with that, click OK. And the action is, what are you going to launch as a result of that? So what I've done here, we are launching PowerShell against a target file over here. And this is a brute force alert target file. Okay, so once you're ready, click OK. Click OK, and I'll show you what is in the PowerShell script. So you can see here, we have the following of the presentation core presentation framework. And of course we have the message and the title of brute force attack attempted and security alert. And then after which we just do a message box on that. So pretty straightforward. And now you can see here, there are no pop-ups. So if I go back over to Kali Linux and I try again this time wrong, all right, I hit enter on this, I enter whatever password, I hit enter on that. I go back over to Windows computer right now, which is a target. You can see a pop-up over here that states brute force attack attempted very neat very nice you're not only a hacker but you're a defender now so that's super cool